Okay, so we've talked about how to derive dimensionless numbers, um, but we haven't talked about how those numbers are related. So let's talk about correlating those variables. In our example, we started with a problem of six variables, and using dimensional analysis, reduce, we reduced it to a problem of three variables. So we've got three dimensionless numbers. What we haven't talked about yet is the function relating those two. How does the independent variable vary in terms of the dependent variables. Um, and we've used the Greek letter phi to represent that function. So what we're trying to do is evaluate that function. How do these variables um, relate to one another? There's two steps to this. We need to find, first we need to find the function form. What I mean by that is we need to establish how these things vary. Is it linear? Is it logarithmic? Is it exponential? So we have to pick what function form to use for this. And, and by the way, this is, this is extremely difficult. There's really no single correct way to go about doing this. Once we've established the function form, then we just have to come up with num uh, values for the parameters, like a and b and m and those equations up above. We do this through curve fitting. Um, in statistics, this is called regression. And this is a complicated topic. There's whole courses devoted to this subject area. So I'm just going to touch on it. Um, we now have a lot of software packages that can do this easily. Um, MATLAB and Excel, for example, have some pretty good software for this. And in Excel, this is called Add Trend Line. And we'll go through how to use Excel to to do some curve fitting. Okay, we're going to do two or three cases. The first case is where there's only one pi. If you've only got one pi value, then um, the function reduces to just a constant. It, it, it can't relate to other pi's because there is only one pi. So no curve fitting is needed. The pi value simply equals a constant. Um, in addition, you don't need much data to do this. You really only need one data point to determine your dimensionless number. When I say one data point, I mean all of your variables uh, measured simultaneously. Okay, so let's say we've got a tube of fluid and we drop a ball into it and we measure the settling velocity. That settling velocity is a function of the diameter of the ball, the difference in specific weight between the ball and the fluid, and the viscosity of the fluid. So we're going to run that experiment with a certain ball and a certain fluid, and, and we measure the settling velocity when we drop that ball through that fluid. The question is determine how the velocity, that settling velocity, varies with the other variables. So we first have to go through dimensional analysis and determine our pi terms. And those are the relevant variables and the dimensions associated with them. Using the Buckingham Pi Theorem, we find that we only have one pi value to determine. We set up our non-repeating and repeating variables, and there's only one choice for this because v is our um, dependent variable. And then we go about setting up our pi's. So for pi 1, we're going to start with our dependent variable v, and it has those dimensions. Now I need to cancel out the l and the t. Um, I don't know how to do the l yet because all the repeating variables have l in it. But only one of them's got a t in it. So let's use mu to get rid of the t. So I multiply by mu, and that cancels out the t values. Now let's get rid of the f. I can use delta gamma for that. And I divide by delta gamma, and that cancels out my f values. And I'm left with L value, so I can use little d for that. And if I divide by d squared, that gets rid of the L values. Okay, so I have a single pi in this problem. It's um, shown there, and it equals phi, where phi is just a constant. 
So now to evaluate phi, we just plug in the values that we've measured for each of the variables. And that's done here. And I have to check to make sure my units all cancel out, and they do. And I'm left with pi 1 equals 18.1. If you have two pies, it gets a little more complicated because now you need multiple data points to fit. We do have some relationship here, and um, we're just going to use conventional fitting tools because they work pretty well. So the idea here is you collect a set of data where pi 1 varies in terms of pi 2. You plot it, and you fit a line through it. So let's work on this example. We've got flow down a pipe through a constriction. So water flows down this pipe, goes through a constriction, and there's a drop in pressure as it passes through that pipe. Um, I've skipped the dimensional analysis part to this. So we have um, six variables. Yeah, six variables. No, five variables, and that reduces down to two pies. Um, we're going to run experiments to test how this delta how pi 1 varies in terms of pi 2. So we're going to use a single fluid at a certain velocity and a certain diameter pipe. Then we vary the size of the contraction, that's little d, and we measure the pressure drop. We can run four experiments with four different little diameters and get four different pressure drops for each of those experiments. We can then plot that data, and I've done this in Excel. So you can see the columns here, little d, big D. So little d varies. We've ran four different tests. Big D, rho, and V are all constant through these. And then we've measured four different delta P's, depending on the size of the contraction we used. We can then determine the pi's using these values, and pi 2 is little d over big D, and that's a simple calculation. Pi 1 is uh, delta P over rho V squared. We can, that's simple enough to calculate as well. We can then plot those two pi's, and we get this kind of a relationship. Now to quantify that relationship, we need to fit it. So in Excel, we use this add trend line and when you do that, make sure you format your trend line. So um, when you go to format and type, you have all these. You have several different types of of um, relationships you can work with. Um, in this case, linear is selected, and make sure you also look at options because when you click on the options button you want to make sure that you've checked display equation on chart and display R squared value on chart. And when you, use, when you use any other package as well, you want to make sure you can see those things. Okay, so I've done this fitting using Excel with two different, two different types of regressions. One is a linear regression and one is a logarithmic regression. And they're both pretty good fits. The logarithmic regression is actually a better fit, and I know that by the R-squared value. If the R-squared value equals 1, it's a perfect fit. That means all of that means the line goes exactly through each of the points. And then as it gets lower, the f that signifies a worse fit. So 0.998, that's pretty good. 0.974 is a little worse. For whatever reason, I chose the linear fit. There's really no right answer here. We don't know what's happening between the points or beyond the points. So this is, in the end, this is a guess. Um, so there is some judgment involved here, unless we run more data, run more experiments. So I went with the linear fit, and now I plugged my pies back in, and I can use those those. Uh, parameter values determined from the fit to come up with a real relationship. Okay, with two pies, that's um, easy to do. With more than two pies, this becomes incredibly difficult. 
and I'm not going to I'm only going to give you one example here because let's say we have four pi values for example that means we have to um, fit a four dimensional figure so we have to collect tons of data create a four dimensional figure and fit a, a surface through that four dimensions which which obviously is is not simple to do it's not even easy to visualize but let's go through one example because it's pretty interesting let's say we have flow down a pipe and we want to measure the drop in pressure due to major losses so due to friction against the pipe walls and turbulence within the pipe we can say that it's just a function of all these variables include length, roughness, diameter, velocity, density, viscosity and when we go through dimensional analysis it depends what dependent vari what, um, um, what dependent variables you pick or what re excuse me what repeating variables you pick but if you pick a certain one set you end up with these four dimensionless numbers so our pi one is a function of these other three pi's so we have reduced the complexity of the problem but we still got four pi's which is quite difficult so what does this function look like again this is a four dimensional problem so we can't even really visualize what this looks like. Well, let's take a moment and look at these pi's. Pi 4 should look familiar to you. That's the Reynolds number. It's upside down, but since it's a dimensional number, that doesn't really matter. Um, pi 2 is relative roughness, which we've used before. Pi 1 and pi 3 probably don't look familiar, but when you combine them, and you can also combine dimensionless numbers because a dimensionless number times a dimensionless number is still a dimensionless number. When you combine them, it turns out to be the friction factor, which we've worked with. So what does phi look like? Well, it's what we've been using all along. It's the Moody diagram. So we've been using dimensionless numbers uh, frequently in this class, even though we haven't really talked about it. And the Moody diagram is a fit of three dimensionless numbers. The friction factor, which was a combination of pi 1 and pi 3 there, the Reynolds number and the roughness, relative roughness, which are also dimensionless numbers which popped out of that. Now if you look at this curve, this is really a three-dimensional curve. It's a those type curves for the relative roughness are really contours showing a surface coming out of the out of the paper. And to determine those contours, someone ran hundreds and hundreds of experiments with pipes of different roughness and diameter and velocity and um, determined the pressure drop to come up with those friction factors. So this was a ton of work and all those lines are nothing other than just fits like we just did with Excel. There's nothing derived in this. This is all just fitting lines through dots. So that's really the source of the Moody diagram. and You can see how useful this dimensionless analysis can be.